Hi, I thought I'd revisit astronomy and go back to lesson one and have a bit of a chat about the actual science of doing astronomy. But the first point I want to make out is that you can keep equipment very simple. What's out there can easily be adapted. For instance, this is a basic telescope of the kind that you may purchase yourself. It's got a four and a half inch mirror and it originally comes with an equatorial mount. This little wheel here will turn the scope in this axis here. And instead of having to move this other axis here, which is your known as your right ascension or RA, it has a little motor. And the little motor comes with a nine volt battery. Now, the idea behind an equatorial mount, as you may or may not know, is that this axis of the tube, which goes here, together with the height of the tripod that you set up, you have to set it up correctly for your latitude, if you're north of the, of the celestial equator, where I am, it's about 52 degrees latitude north, you have to set it up so that this telescope would line up with the pole star. What you can do, of course, is extend your tripod legs down and make a mark on them so that when I carry my telescope outside I can set it up at a place, I can even put a mark on the ground itself so that I can see where to put the telescope. That's if you keep it in the same place. But I move my telescopes around a lot. Now, a word about astronomy. What you don't want to do with astronomy is to get a cricked neck. If you use ordinary binoculars that's what you're likely to get over time. Here are a few useful bits and pieces you can have to do astronomy. A compass, always handy to give you an idea of exactly where you are if, you're, if you travel about with astronomy. It also gives you where magnetic north is. A little flashlight, it can be of the wind-up kind with a dynamo. Now, what do you do about equipment? I'll be honest with you. I like binoculars, they're very useful for, for terrestrial viewing, but as far as viewing it over your head, where you are going to see the best views and where the atmosphere is most steady, you're going to get a, a cricked neck unless you lie down. So what I do is if I find a pair of binoculars that are old and I can't collimate them properly, that is to get both of them to, uh, of the lens to focus correctly to my eyes, I'll take them apart. Here we have, for instance, part of an old binocular set that I had, binoculars that didn't work very well. The front lens is 50 millimeters, it's a normal binocular lens, and I've used a prism which I've taped in at an angle and an old binocular eyepiece at the back. And the idea is I can put my eye up to this device here and I can see through my actual binocular scope distant objects and that way I don't have to strain my neck when I'm looking overhead. I mean, you can basically, that's a very blurry focus of a tree, but I can also go overhead at, the, at an angle such as this, okay? And I'm looking almost like a periscope, but I'm seeing stars overhead. I'm not cricking my neck. Now that's sensible. If you have any car boots near where you are or old shops that sell things that are like old lenses that might have been used for something else think about how you could adapt them for astronomy for instance I have I found this old lens here okay which is probably a nearly 70 millimeters and what I did is found it in a very very heavy um, steel casing I took the steel casing off put the lens in I used an old foam bath plastic tube okay then at the back of it, I, well, I cut the foam tube at the end, I put a binocular prism at that end, and then an ordinary binocular eyepiece with an eye cup on the end. So basically, I've got a very, very clear view. Basically, the eye from here, you can see light travels from a distant star or a planet. It hits the prism, and it hits it at what's known as the critical angle, which is the, how the prisms are made. The light path then comes up straight out through the eyepiece here. It's not even stopped down inside. Maximum light gathering ability, maximum means of use. Now, this might seem a bit very, very simple, but I've put a couple of, couple of pieces of 
uh, ordinary tubing, cardboard tubing at the top. And the idea is, if you want to make astronomy simple, you sight through the top circle until you see an object, and then I look here in the eyepiece. And roughly speaking, I'll find out which whereabouts in the sky through that little circle it is what I'm looking at, and I can match that through my eyepiece. And this telescope here gives astonishingly clear, clear views of distant objects. And the idea is you need to make astronomy fun, easy and quick. The reason being is because it gets very cloudy. If you have expensive equipment, the trouble with that is obviously the cost, but also damaging it, and you can't really move it around easily. Whereas if you look at my simple setup here I've got here, then it's very, very simple to move any of this equipment round. Now, if you buy a spotter scope, a cheap one that I did, um, you'll find the front lens is very useful. It might be 60 millimeters or even slightly more. But what they give you on a spotter scope, uh, I've removed the back end of it because I have these overrated magnifications. Again, I used a binocular prism um, here, and I used an ordinary binocular eyepiece okay, here. And I used an old, from a very, very cheap telescope, the spotter scope on an old cheap telescope, and taped it on top. This particular scope has been my, one of my best yet for handhold views of the universe. The reason being is because it has fantastic light gathering ability, about over 60 millimetres, well, around about. And at the back end of the scope, I've got a decent binocular eyepiece and a decent binocular prism encased at the correct angle. Okay, I've taped the eyepiece around held it with a bit of string, and also to make sure that doesn't, doesn't fall out and break, I've even taped the string from here to here, and I can extend that tube out to focus. It's incredibly light, okay, it's incredibly light, and it means that I can look for, ex for long periods of objects in the sky. The whole point of astronomy is that if you're looking through a telescope, yeah, maybe they're, you could say they're very useful for looking at planets or more magnified views of the universe and possibly with a low powered eyepiece at the moon if you want great lunar detail and for photography there's no doubt about it. How do you make your basic reflective reflecting telescope more useful? I've got a Chinese made telescope here and it has a decent sized mirror it's four and a half inches many people have telescopes with smaller apertures some people larger okay and it has a secondary mirror here which I'm pointing to here, light comes from a star, hits this coated mirror at the bottom, and this mirror, I believe, it will be aluminium oxide coated. It's also got a special sealing compound that makes it a longer life mirror than some of the silvered mirrors. So although it may not have the same reflective quality, it's got a much longer lifespan than larger mirrors. And also, I found, gives a beautiful, sharp, sharp image. And that's what you want, a nice, clear, bright, sharp image. The light comes down, from the stars hits the mirror, it's called a parabolic mirror. It's a special curve that focuses light of all different wavelengths to one particular point, and that reduces what's known as chromatic aberration, that's colour fringing. And also you can have something called spherical aberration, which often occurs with lenses. It's distortion, you want that at a minimum. Now, the basic eyepiece I've got here, I even use some of my old binocular eyepieces on um, my telescope. They do come with a couple of eyepieces. What I've done to make it more useful is that I found if you're just looking through the telescope and you're moving your telescope round, that's fine. But perhaps you want to know your way around the sky. Well, the only way to do that is to look through low power. You want rich field, low power views. And here's how you do it. What you can do is if you get one of your adapted binocular lenses here, you have a tube at the back of it, you use a binocular prism here and a binocular lens or an old lens from something else like a toy microscope you've got yourself a decent spotter and also you've mounted it on your equatorial mount that becomes incredibly useful especially for astrophotography with a webcam or with a cheap digital camera I have a cheap digital camera which I can use the second one I've done here was particularly just for webcams and I did use a proper um, prism here which came with one telescope here. But that's for putting webcams in. My spotter scope is a long, beautiful spot. Uh, this is a beautiful finding scope that I found on a cheap telescope, and that does have crosshairs in it underneath. And basically, you see like a cross when you look at, when you look at the lens. Look up the lens, there should be a cross there. 
Now, every telescope will tell you that it has a particular aperture, uh, 114 millimeters, and it has a particular millimeters, which is its focal length, and it tells you something called an F ratio. The smaller the F ratio, the faster the telescope is. That means the, f the, the, the more sort of light gathering ability it's got. Um, but the trouble is, if you have a long F ratio, it's much better for higher magnifications like planets. But if, like me, you just want to know your way around the sky and you want to see things like nebula and galaxies and do some photography, you need a very fast setup, a fast lens setup. And these little scopes here, these little scopes I've made from binocular lenses are ideal for using webcams and CCD cameras. Yes, you could put a CCD camera to this particular lens here, but the field of view you've got in the sky is tiny. And believe you me, at high magnification, because of the way the sky is moving, 15 degrees in one hour, when you're looking at the moon, even something as large as the moon, it moves incredibly quickly. Now, what can you do about photography? If you invest in an old camera, such as this one, which is an Olympus Comedia, you can take shots up to 15 seconds, and that will show you, show you phenomena such as the plough, and also, I've taken overhead shots from where I live, and basically, you're looking at stars. I mean, obviously, there's a bit of dust on the screen, but these look better on a computer screen. It'll show you stars down to about, say, third or fourth magnitude, maybe a bit fainter, okay? And the idea is that you're getting used to photography, but what you can also do is use the same setup to take pictures of the night sky through your own telescope and you can try doing that using a tripod but it's good to get around where you live and just basically get some pictures of night scenes as well and get used to the using your camera at night time and see what sort of pictures you can get for astronomy a tripod is extremely useful for astronomy because your camera uh, can be mounted on the tripod you can also use i can also use a very simple ring that even came with this original spotter scope to put around the tube because i can take that bottom bit off put the ring around this tube here and i can clamp this scope very easily onto this tripod okay that then makes this telescope as good as any that are much more expensive because i believe the optics and i've tested the optics at night time give very clear very low, low power, wide field images. Now, I can't stress em enough how important it is to look at wide field in, 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 uh, uh, in astronomy, because astronomy is really about, to me, about knowing your way around the sky, knowing the constellations, looking for things like Pisces, looking at things in more detail and discovering things like clusters. And also, it's just fun to watch things like satellites go by. If you're looking for a telescope, Obviously, you can see beautiful images of the planets. You may well get into astrophotography. But for now, keep it simple. And remember what I've said about taking apart an old pair of binoculars, using the front lenses, using the prisms and cardboard tubes, making your own little scopes, something you can use to see overhead things. If it's not fun, you won't do it. When assembling your scope, make sure you tighten things properly. Check that the screws are on properly and that the legs are properly clamped. You might need someone to help you carry a telescope around. I'm strong enough to carry this telescope around, but if you're not, then it's, it's best to be very, very careful and to carry things in stages. Some people have to keep things in one place, in which case you might just have one place for your telescope ready to use and set up. And of course, I've taken the cap off this telescope, and it does come with its own plastic cap, which goes on and fits over the top of it. And similarly with it for these lenses, they could do with a bit of a clean, but you can get caps for them, okay? Now, as regards the telescope itself, I think the idea for me is to have something that's simple, easy to use and quick to use. That telescope behind me can be carried virtually anywhere, and I've carried it across the bottom of the garden, onto the pavement at the front to see, to see phenomena, such as beautiful uh, crescent moons just setting, and astronomy is... Basically, that's what it's about, racing to catch something, to see something in the sky that you think is exciting, or staying up to see something like a meteor shower and ph photographing it. And I'll talk more about equipment in another instalment. Thank you.
But I found it exciting just to get a basic picture of the night sky using my basic camera here. This one came, came, came with smart media cards. And just looking sort of southeast from where I live over a tree, my view's quite obscure, but just to capture some stars on a long exposure using a tripod, 15 second exposure, that's a maximum I can get from this camera. And that's on a tripod, it's not moving with the telescope. It's exciting and fun. And basically you can scroll through your own pictures and see, you know, what you got. And I was trying to capture the plough over a chimney pot. And this was pitch black when these shots were taken. But basically looking overhead just from my back garden, I find it exciting just to, just to get something that, you know, you don't normally see. You can see these things with your eyes, but to actually capture them yourself using your own very simple equipment, I found that challenging and fun. And this particular shot here, which I liked over a chimney pot, is just the plough, but to me I find it exciting. And that's what astronomy is all about, it's having a go yourself, not being overawed by limitations. Because the human eye might have a diameter of, say, four millimetres or six millimetres. But if you're using something which is a 50 millimetres to have a look at the sky, the idea is to square the diameter. So four squared is 16. That might be your eye's power. 50 squared, you're talking 2,500. So there's a comparison. You've got 2,500 lots of light coming in compared to only 16 lots of light coming in from your eye, for instance. And that's what it's all about using simple equipment to improve your observation of our universe. Here's the simplest scope I ever made. I found this in a car boot and it's probably got a diameter of about 40 millimeters and it was used for something like a, project, a projector lens and an old eyepiece and I didn't have a prism for this one so basically all I did was put the eyepiece on the front, I shielded it with a bit of cardboard that stopped glare and reflections from coming in and then at the back of it I used an old binocular uh, piece of plastic tubing from inside a binocular where the lenses are fitting at the front put the lens straight through the back and there I have a small scope and it's a rich field scope and it gives incredibly sharp images they're upside down but then mostly for astronomy that's what you're working with upside down and the whole point is that you need to enjoy what you do. And if you get bogged down with too much equipment, you're not going to be able to see what's out there because it'll be gone by the time your equipment's ready. Keep it simple. In astronomy, grab every opportunity to see something exciting, for instance. Always grab every opportunity to see something exciting in astronomy, for instance, a crescent moon showing Earth shine. Here we have a crescent moon showing earth shine through a low power by one of my low power spotters on a telescope. I just took the telescope out to the front door and I'm looking through a 50 millimeter objective at a nice crescent moon. And this is what astronomy is all about, seeing something in the sky, getting out there quickly to get a view of it. I'm looking to see if I can capture some earth shine on this crescent moon. Let's take the power up a bit. There you go. Now I know it's only low resolution video, but there is some earth shine, which is where light comes from, the sun hits the earth's atmosphere, and then goes onto the moon itself. And this is only through a low powered scope. On this scope, of course, I've, as you've seen earlier, I've put some extra little spotters and these are brilliant for finding objects. Even an object like the moon, which is half a degree in the sky, can be hard to find if you're not set up properly. This scope has been set up so that the polar axis, which is not very easy to see here in the dark, is set up roughly towards the pole star. And I've, tr and I've also turned the tube around so that it faces an easy way so I can see celestial objects. This is the moon looking yeah. through the main telescope, it's a crescent. I can try and use a bit of telephoto lens here to see if we can zoom in a bit. 
we've only been out for a, only a couple of minutes if I angle the lens slightly you can probably see more lunar detail and that's just with a basic video camera and that's how you should start off you can use a moon map to improve your understanding of the lunar topography but there's plenty of earth shine on this obviously this is how you can adapt a telescope which has got short focal length made from cheap equipment which you adapt yourself here we have the spotter scope I showed you earlier that's the front lens that I borrowed um, I took the assembly, main assembly off it, it was very heavy and the back of the scope had this ridiculously high magnification so what you do is you get a car piece of cardboard tube in and you get a binocular prism so I've taken old binoculars apart you set it at this angle here which gives the critical angle um, for reflection we get what's known as total internal reflection light coming down the tube here hits at the correct angle 45 it comes off then you need to put some black paper at the back of this lens here don't get sticky tape on the prism you just wrap it in black paper and then you use an old binocular eyepiece like this and I just encase them either in tape or string and you sit your eyepiece on top like so okay you can use um, a plastic part of the eyepiece from the binocular for some eye relief but basically that's how you set it like that so the back end of my telescope is basically just this setup one prism and one eyepiece all it does is give you a left to right view instead of being upside down but you're not but not looking upside down is quite handy if like me you, you don't you find it difficult to find your way around the sky upside down which is what telescopes give you why do they go upside down because every time light hits a surface you lose some photons and basically, if you're looking upside down through like a reflecting telescope, you're getting maximum photons to the eyes. Okay, now I use the ring. This telescope came with a, with a ring here, okay? That's the ring there, which has a little adapter that you can then screw onto a tripod. There's a wheel here underneath this here, okay? Now, it's not the most stable of mounts, but it's safe as it is, and this is very light. It's so light, this little scope you can use it on its own almost like a periscope to view overhead without cricking your neck now this is also handy because I could use this for astrophotography keep it simple quite a cheap small camera okay this one's not particularly fantastic you try to use one which which is a I've got a better lens than this one but the idea is you you use your telescope on, on the clamp here okay and I can tilt the angle of this scope even to even to nearly overhead okay and I can virtually see anything I like in the sky I can swivel it around it's known as an out azimuth mount swivel it round hold it steady when I see something by twisting this that's steady okay and the tripod's got a little screw here and I've set the legs up at the right angle and that means without cricking my neck I can actually observe something like the moon or a planet say Saturn or or something like that but be very careful with astronomy don't ever ever look at the sun using these telescopes you can blind yourself it's serious okay the sun is a, is, is, a, is a celestial object in its own right would have to reference how to look at how how it is safe personally I don't, I don't observe the sun but that's it's up to you to reference it but I'm warning you you can blind yourself it's dangerous okay now as far as this goes with these prisms and the eyepieces as I said to you this prism is encased at, a, at this critical angle inside get this the right way around and basically you're then you're capturing the light and you're having it coming up to the eyepiece at the correct angle now the top lens here of course is your eyepiece um, to start with you can just use the, the spotters that came came with your with a cheap telescope this was the original one that came with my yellow telescope okay Be the reason being is they have little crosshairs inside them I don't know whether you can capture that and the camera there can you see the little crosshairs yeah and that, that, that on its own, although this has got some aberration, that's colour fringing, you can find your way around the sky just on your own, just going like this, looking at stars yourself, okay? Because you, you personally need to connect with the stars. It's not all about equipment. You need to feel you're interested in it yourself. Try and find your way around. Okay, another adaptation I've done on an old spotter scope. This scope here came with a very tiny, small front lens, not much bigger than this lens here okay that comes from something like a projector and I found the back part of it had this I was quite it's got different magnifications on the side of it here okay 
and the lens at the back was tiny so I, so I took the tiny lens off put a binocular lens on the back replaced the front lens here with a binocular lens of 50 okay so I've got one binocular front lens and then a binocular eyepiece so I've still got all the magnification changes and this scope here gives very high magnification but very bright images okay and again if I wanted to I could use this clamp here clamp this scope into here but then I don't have the prism on on this one but this I particularly like this telescope here for looking at say star clusters once you've looked at, through one of these scopes I can use this to look at nice bright star clusters so there you go there's a few ideas to get you going in astronomy and how you can use cameras for instance a digital camera and you can what you need to do is bring the camera right up to the eyepiece I use two, my thumb and my first finger either side of the lens move it very slowly across until I can see something and you've also got zoom don't forget on a digital camera you can zoom while you're holding it steady and then try taking a picture of course some digital cameras like my other ones are cheap ones old ones with smart media cards have got longer exposures why not try getting a star picture through here and then bring your camera up and say try three or four seconds you never know you might get a beautiful picture and you can share them with everybody else on YouTube that's been Mike telling you about the basics of astronomy have a go how to make a telescope from simple equipment that you might find around you if you find an old pair of binoculars perhaps they're too high powered or they're just unwieldy and you can't collimate them that is focus both eyes to commonplace and you want to use them for astronomy this is what you do use the front lens unscrew it from the binocular okay and it'll come with its own attached part from the binocular you'll need to provide your own tube this one here came from a toilet roll kitchen roll tubes might do as well but for the back tube it's going to have to have a slightly smaller diameter okay notice how I've attached this front tube to the back tube with string very important so it doesn't fall out at night time okay now how do you use the prism well I've set a prism up here to show you how here's a simple type of lens I might make a simple um, telescope from it's come from something like a projector I bought at a car boot an old lens um, you've got your la large cardboard tube smaller tube at the back and your prism has to be set at this angle so light comes I would I would personally set it like this okay so that lights coming from your front lens that's your objective through here to hit the prism here if you, see, if you see this, it hits this, the back of the prism here, it comes up at a right angle, okay, so light travels through, it hits the back, comes at a right angle. This angle here is a critical angle, which is 45 degrees for the prism, and on the top of the prism, that's where I would encase a binocular eyepiece, which I've taken out. You might have to have a very small screwdriver to get the old binocular eyepieces out, and I make a nest for it on the top. To make a nest for one of these, you can use tubes such as these which might be aluminium foil tubes that, that they can fit inside and you need to have like a small hacksaw so if you're doing this um, and you probably need adult supervision basically uh, if, if you're below a certain age group okay so that's the correct angle for light to come in that's the, that's the way this prism set now what how do you get the prism on to, to fit onto this well if you can use ca um, black papers the best make yourself basically a whole series of almost like sort of um, a cradle of, of cut yourself strips of black put it across here wrap it round like that and tape it heavily onto here don't put tape on the prism itself same again cradle it underneath like so okay and wrap it round but you must leave this top of the prism area clear you can cradle all the way around as long as you've got a circular area clear then this lens which is the uh, eyepiece lens will fit neatly on top you basically just need to make a cradle for that to fit into. Sometimes I've just literally put loads of, once I've encased the prism, put loads and loads of tape, just cradled it round, taped it onto this tube here, wrapped it round and around, even used string and wrapped, wrapped around as in this telescope here. Then you're left with a telescope which gives you an image the right way round, but it's left to right instead of upside down. Okay? Also, if your telescope did come originally, or if your spot scope came with one of these rings, can fit on a tripod, I keep it and use it for that. Here we have on a diagram how to how to use it yourself, how to make it yourself. So you've got your brown, you've got a, a, a binocular lens at the front there. You can use masking tape around. It. Make sure you've got loads of masking tape. You don't want that lens to fall off. Okay. Uh, you can use uh, cardboard tubes, 
If you have a large lens, you can use something like washing up liquid bottles or bubble bath. And then your tube that goes at the back here, you probably need to use some bubble wrap around it. Because what you need to do, obviously, with any telescope is to focus it, okay? So you need to have some movement to focus at objects in the sky, okay? Um, and I've used a string here to stop that from falling out, okay? And obviously, if you've got your prism set at this correct angle here, as you can see, that's the angle there um, at the end of the tube, like so, okay? And you basically don't put tape on this, just put some paper around it. Black paper is the best. First, put the black paper, take the black paper, so basically it's held by um, the tape on this side here, and you can put loads of tape on this, onto this tube here to hold it, but don't put tape onto this actual prism. It needs to be free so that the light can hit the back, and you have black paper um, behind this, okay? And then onto your eyepiece, just make sure your eyepiece is put into a container or, or cut card yourself to fit round your eyepiece okay and then on where the eyepiece is here at the top here basically what you need to do is once this has been encased you can just put as much tape if you like tape as you like around the eyepiece itself to fit over the paper you've already put onto this uh, prism okay and then you've got your simple telescope uh, and the only other thing I can say it gives you simple rich field views of star clusters or just to gaze at faint nebula and you'll be astonished by how many stars and how many faint objects you can see in the night sky. Moreover, you'll enjoy it, and it's light, easy to hold, and uh, the, you might only get 10 minutes of viewing before the clouds come over, but at least you've made the best of it. And someone who's got much more expensive equipment, that night will be useless to them. They won't even have time to set up. So enjoy it.
Thank you.